So we're here at Coconuts TV and tonight we're joined by Steve Fallon, another Cambridge United legend who's also played 410 appearances in league football and also as someone called Clive Hillier mentioned to me earlier, a real Cambridge figure in local football as well and probably arguably one of the best legends in local Cambridge football I'd say with your managerial career as well, what you've done and that's from Clive, you mentioned that earlier so nice, to, thanks for that Clive. So Steve we're going to talk about your career, so how did you get into football? Well, I think obviously from an early age, my brother who is four years um, older than me, I just used to go and do what he did and I ended up, uh, obviously in those, those days it was a lot of football, you could just go down the wreck and you'd spend all day down the wreck, um, having, kicking about. And, and then go and home when it's dark. Yeah. yeah, so I was playing with above my age group most of the time from a young age, um, school team as well, I'd, I'd play up a year in the school team. Um, I went to... Um, March Grammar, uh, which was Neil Wade. Um, now uh, I went there and uh, I played for a team like three years older than me. My my first game there. So I've always through my brother who we were talking about this uh, when we were away the other day. <laughs> that lots of people think he was the better player, okay. and you know he was a bit unlucky. And uh, yeah. we had this conversation, which he was a very good player. Um, and I, you know, I make no bones about it that I've been very lucky and fortunate how things have fallen for me and you know you have to be got be in the right place at the right time, right time. Yeah, football, and, yeah as we've and, said before and, and you know I, I i'm just so pleased that you know everything has, has gone the way it is you know okay. from start to finish and obviously what how old was you when you joined Cambridge united i was 17 coming on 18 i would have an august birthday so I, i'm sort of at the, at the end of each school year. And how did it feel as a local lad being snapped up by a biggish club in the city, we should say? Well, to be fair, <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like saying this, but I was, I was born in Whittlesey, obviously, so yeah. um, Peterborough was my Okay, yeah, place. we use that as a swear word around here. Yes, I know, yeah. <laughs> that'll be cut out, I know that. But, no, um, so, you know, I'd, I'd never been to Cambridge. Okay. Cambridge wasn't on, yeah. on the scene as such. Okay. We, were, we were probably classed a little bit as Huntingdonshire mm. around mm. March and that so it was only when obviously I went to Kettering um, and playing for the youth team in Kettering and, and we had a, a fairly good side uh, Kettering were a strong um, team in those days in non-league um, and we had good runs in in the cup competition so again I think I was very fortunate that I was still at Kettering when when Ron came along to to ask me if I'd He's to, to, well, to tell me that he was going to, to Cambridge and he'd like me to go with him. Yeah. And talking of Ron, what was it like to play under Big Ron? And what, how did he kind of set up mentally and physically your teams? Well, he, he, would, he would lead by example. You know, it's his passion and, you know, he, he wouldn't accept defeat. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't accept people not giving 100%. And he doesn't accept losing, I don't think. Yeah, you I, know, mean, I would say that would be, you know, his, his biggest strength. And, you know, he had the... He had the physique to back that up. Yeah, and we spoke to Tom Finney last week and he also mentioned playing under Big Ron, how the mentality was we outscored the other team. So it didn't matter if you conceded, but also as long as you outscored the other team, that was the name of the game. Did you, would you agree with Tom on that to a degree? Yes, I think, uh, you know, he, he didn't put any real restrictions on things. He, he just picked what he thought was a good team and, you know, you would go out there and give your, give your all, really. And, uh, you know, the, the little things that we do, that we did off the pitch, uh, he'd run a little book and he'd give everybody a, a, a price to, to score a goal, and be 10 <laughs> to 1, and yeah. you know, he would stand all the bets, little things like Do that. Do you remember your price? Been a defender, obviously quite high, I guess. It would be quite high, <laughs> yes, but, uh, and I would have a bet on myself, but yeah, good. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think I ever scored enough to, to make a profit at the end and of the day. And we've seen, haven't we, Tom, from videos as well, you running 40 yards down the pitch and scoring with a nice header in that extra game. I, I wonder I, what the price was that day for you. <laughs> well, I, I, I must admit, I was I was always more of an attacking player than than a defensive player from all the way through, really. So you know, to end up at centre half um, was obviously somebody along the line thought that that was my best position. Mm. Um, but you know, within that, I, I had the license to go forward if, if you like. You know, I, I would go and I played fullback early on a few times and I love fullback you know that was just yeah because you're bombing forward yeah, as well just, as sitting back you know, up yeah. and down and I, th I think I just had that um sort of carefree attitude to it I don't, you know I don't yeah, yeah I would just go out and enjoy it and I you know Ron would say in those days that you know it, 
go out and enjoy would, yourself. Yeah, yeah. nothing would, would phase you. Just go out there and, you know, what happens, happens. And uh, I think that helped me, obviously, in, in the early days because, you know, I think... Especially uh, as a youngster as well. It's nice to have that yeah. as a manager, isn't it? Yeah. That kind of carefree attitude a bit. That's right. You know, and at the start, start of the career, you know, if you have some success, which we did when, you know, 18, 19, then, you know, you can't ask for anything else. No, you know, exactly. you're just going to have that buzz about football. Definitely. Um, and it lasted for quite a few years, you know, just sort of coming here and you, you're playing Sunday football, if you like, and youth team football, and three years later, you you know, four years later, playing you played Chelsea, yeah. West Ham, you know, Plans all the big, big boys, teams, yeah. yeah, you know, and just, you know, just live the dream, as, as they say, I suppose. Steve, I think you're putting yourself down a little bit here, because you were actually a pretty damn good goal scorer, you, <laughs> <laughs> when I saw you, you had something with eight goals from, from midfield. I, I, yeah, I, I did. I mean, as I said, I started off as playing up front, and you know, my younger days, I would, I'd, I'd play a lot yeah. um, as a forward. I think that's what always kept me as you know. And I was playing for Whittlesea, which is when I was sixteen, and I was I was a forward in in those games as so well. So you think it was your your, your size because you, you know you're, you're you're quite tall, especially for those days. You're pretty tall. That, that drew you to once being a centre half, or was it that you get that, that was where the opening was? I think. That was where I was, you know, the, the people who were there thought that I would be a best use, if you like. They, you know, they might have had some good forwards and, you know, I could play, <laughs> I could play centre-half. And in, a, in, in a Cambridge United team which comprised Sammy Morgan, international, Tom Finney, international, Alan Bailey, you still scored a number of goals from midfield. Was it that they took the goalkeeper out of the way or what, what happened? I think we, we had a... A little bit of a, I don't know, our set plays were good, I think, in those days. Um, we, we did a lot to the near post and, uh, you know, we were quite good at that as a team. I think um, it, it was somebody at near post flick it on and, and Tom Finney would be back post and just stab it in because, you know, he's fearless at the back post. If he's going to get there, you know, people have to be brave to, to yeah, stop no him getting it. So, you know, that, that worked for us. And as, as I say, when you're in a good side, you know, you're going to get lots of chances, you're going to get lots of set plays and obviously that, that helped. But, uh, you know, I scored a few that weren't set plays as well, which again would just be, um, I don't know, the, the, the want and the ambition to attack. And that's, that's why when Dave Stringer was playing, you know, it was great because he, he would encourage that, he'd joke about it, and that, but he, he knew what would, I would do. And the same with any level of football, if you've got experience and, and good players, they will just cover for you, you know, and it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a problem if when the centre half goes, if somebody talks and Dave Stringer as long as there's cover at the back, yeah. isn't it? And that's Dave Stringer would organise yeah. that, and that's yeah. all it was organisation, you know. Then it wouldn't matter. You can't as a as a if you want to get forward, you can't stand and have a look around and say, "Oh, I do this, I'm going to go off in a minute," because you just lose the moment. And you know. So is just... it true what we've heard then that Stringer, Dave Stringer, always used to say, "I'll let Steve do all the running. I'll let Steve do all the work." It would be, yes, you know, and fair play. He's earned, he'd earned the right to, yeah. you know, to have yeah, that, yeah. you know, with, with all his experience and, and that, you know, and it, there's no doubt that, you know, you can talk a good game mm. and help the rest of the people. And Dave Stringer, you know, certainly did that for us when he, when he played. Talking of that team as well, what, what was your favourite partnership to play alongside? I think, you know, I've been very fortunate that, you know, some of the, you know, the best players you could get have been, um, centre half with Chris Turner, Lindsay Smith, uh, Dave Stringer. You know they're all very, yeah. very good. And I suppose they're all and different. They're all different as well. They all bring right. something different to the. And team then there as well, was didn't yeah, they? and then there was the, the king of Terry Eads, who you know he was he was a legend here, and yeah. he he had such a great attitude, you know, and so calm, and you know, and and again organising and you know helping me when I first came. I was going to say know. as a youngster obviously yeah. Terry would have been a big influence I well, guess around right. the change you know because it would be that they would say that you know I've come to take Terry's place because um, mm. so Terry was towards the end of his yep. his career and you know but there was never any you know. Who, uh, who would you been. say would be the best person at the club that you learned from as a youngster coming here? Who did you look up to personally when you started your career here? I, th I think it's got to be Terry, Terry Ease because I think he was you know, he was the leader of the club at that time. He was, uh, you know, the the, uh, the person who's been around. Everybody looked to, and you know, he had that aura that about him. That, yeah. yeah, that you know, you would mm. you would respect everything he said. Can and can we say absolutely here and now on camera for anyone who's listening 
that we are very keen to speak to Terry. We are indeed. Which he has agreed, you know, when he feels a bit better. Yeah. He's, we will get Terry on camera. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant. Because he's a lovely bloke. He certainly is. And obviously we've talked about coming in as a youngster and playing some very big sides. You played the likes of Newcastle here, Chelsea, West Ham, to name a few. What was it like as a young person playing against those big prominent clubs? I think did you, did you feel did you feel scared? Did you feel anxious walking onto the pitch? No, I think uh, for the start of my career, up to probably maybe 23, 24, I had no no problems. With, as I was getting older, then it, I started to get a few more nerves. But as mm. a youngster, I didn't have any nerves at all. It was so. It's you know, true. What they say you are fearless as a player. As it, a was, it was it was great. You know, it, I, it didn't bother me. I'd go out there. You know, it, almost to say that you know, I just you know, what am I doing here? I'm just going to enjoy it, sort of. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. have that, but okay. that did come later. And also in that in that time, it was a time when there was quite a bit of trouble yes. yeah. in football, but that built up an excitement around mm. games. You know, you'd come there, there'd be big crowds and there'll be, you the know, a lot. A, the Abbey is a bit of a fortress, wasn't That's it? That's right. You know, so it became a little bit, you know, you're going there, you're traveling away, you're going to Millwall and all the reputations of Millwall and you've got Leeds and Chelsea and all of that, you know, as, as a young lad, you're watching that and you're, you're thinking of, you know, all these supporters and all of a sudden you're in the middle of it. You know, we're playing Chelsea here and all of a sudden they're on the pitch and the supporters are on the pitch. But, you know, never really felt threatened by that. Obviously, we didn't want any of that to, to happen yeah, yeah. And, and it to go away from it. But it did put a little bit of a buzz into, into, in, the, players, into the atmosphere yeah. and, and what's going yeah. on. You know, when you know all these things going around you and you're playing like a football match. That's right? a bit of spice. One, sorry, Ben. There was one particular game that I was reading about just this afternoon. And it was a game against West Ham. And apparently the atmosphere was electric and the fans were pretty well. There were various things going on in the field. I don't know if you played in that game. It was up here. I, think. I, would, I, would, I would think so, yeah. I think I've played uh, in that. Yeah. All those games that we, we did play West Ham in that, yeah. yeah. So. Who, yeah, who, who would you say, so going back to playing against the likes of these big clubs, as a defender, who would you think, God, I've got to go out there and defend against this guy on a Saturday? Who, who did you... Not fear as such, but who did you like think, blimey, I've got a tough job today when I go out there? I think there was the, the, the toughest jobs were like the big centre forwards that mm. were the lumps, quite yeah. aggressive, yeah. you know, within, within that. Um, like I think probably had the most problems, the, well, the two, I think Terry Dixon when he, when he played, who was yeah. obviously there, and, and Clive Allen. And, um, Unfortunately, it's on YouTube. I think where <laughs> where he sat me yeah, down yeah, on yeah. the backside, and you know, and uh, you know, those sort of players were just. How, how would you stop a player of that caliber? Would you give him a sly kick? Uh, would you play some dirty tricks so that we know? I, no, I wouldn't. No? no, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I I didn't get um, too many bookings, or um, I got sent off a couple of times, and <laughs> I, I had to go to when they used to take you to the FA and yeah. and what have you. Um, but you know, I, I I didn't I wouldn't deliberately. Yeah, as I got like older, say, yeah, yeah. And probably a bit grumpier. Then yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You, you do get, get a little bit. <laughs> you do get a little bit more. And and I got sent off here, which is probably the only one that I can say that I I, I regret. And it yeah. was you know not called for. And um, I, I think kind it, of anger. Was it Burnley at home or somebody at home? And I think it was. That was in the um, John Ryan days, I think, when okay. things were starting to yeah, deteriorate. Yeah, you know, and it, you know everything was. A, a just bit. sorry, just touching on, you said that when you in that day you used to get sent off, you used to have to go to the FA. So obviously you were someone like a naughty boy, was you to go and see the FA? What, yeah, what, what happened? What was the process? Um, I don't know. You just sit in a. I, I think this was for. I think it was for bookings. I might have got four okay. or five bookings or something where they, they say, and then you have to go to and see um, a panel sort of thing. Yeah, and I think they just talk to you and tell you not to I think you know that <laughs> yeah. was in the Ron Atkinson days okay, and he yeah. came along you know and it's, yeah, yeah. it's really a waste of time yeah, you know yeah. it was you know a ticking I've got box the, exercise so yeah, to speak. yeah yeah I've yeah. got the bookings and you know I some were unlucky as you say and, and mm. some were some were not but you know I, I very rarely um, would say that I'd, I would deliberately try and hurt somebody you there's know a, there's a belief among fans that in general for someone who's sent off straight red they're fined about three weeks' wages because you can tell a Premier League yeah. player is going to get fined a fortune. A second division player is maybe going to get fined three thousand pounds, something like that. Yeah. You know. is, is that is that true? Is that true? 
I, I think all the all the disciplinary part of of the sport is is down to I would say the manager most you know if 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 they think you know well he was unlucky and you know in those days obviously you didn't have all the feedback and that and you know and if you if you're going well and if you're doing well and the manager likes you I say they're not going to really upset you there would be there would be standard things within it but again I think it was all flexible and um, it was it was quite funny because I found an old contract when I was digging out one there and you know and I could not work out whether I was well paid or not, you know, you're, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you're trying yeah, to think. Yeah. And I, I remember somebody was talking and saying somebody was playing for Chelsea was only on two hundred pound a week or something like that. Mm. And you know, you think, no, nah, they must must be on more, a yeah, lot more. And they said, yeah. no, there's only on. You know, so you think, well, I, I thought I was on more than that at that time. But then when you go back and you look at it, you know, you're probably on a hundred pound and mm. yeah. one hundred twenty-five. Yeah. But at that at that time, when when Ron and, and John Doherty then took over, there was a lot. A lot was on bonuses, mm. you know, per point and all of this. And, and how did you feel as a player that having bonuses? Was it an incentive as a player or did you think, blimey, I could do with a bit more? Obviously, there were stories. Alan Burge, for instance, was telling me earlier how QPR came knocking, interested in you at one point and some other clubs. Did you feel, right, it's time to leave, move on? Or obviously, you're a bit of a club man, obviously, as we've yeah. seen with the records. Did you, was you happy I don't, I don't think at any point... I think I could honestly say that I thought about leaving, mm. you know, um, at the time when probably when the talk was about, there was no need to, you know, yeah. we were doing well and we were in mm. the like, yeah. first division or yeah. second division, whatever it was in those days. So there was no real need because, you know, I just enjoying enjoying your football. Yeah. You want to stay where you yeah. are. Don't you? And, you know, I had no big ambitions to, you know, to, like, if you like, move on as such that would become open you know I probably thought yeah oh, I wonder if I could do that but I, I, I can honestly say I don't think I ever thought oh you know I should be playing yeah in the Premier League I think League. that's something football lacks these days isn't it yeah. loyalty there isn't so much loyalty in the game anymore no I, yeah, I'd given like a, a long contract and you know obviously as we're saying I came into such a nice place mm, anyway live, and yeah. you know like the wife and the family and they're all, they're all around you know there, there wasn't it? really any need because i I've never been money or orientated, you know, that's never really bothered me at all, you know, as long as I've got enough, yeah. you know, I don't, you know, I don't chase big mansions or, you know, whether that's a fault or whether that's, that's not is, you know, time, but, you know, I can honestly say I wouldn't change any minute. Yeah, good. You know, that, and that's, yeah. and I think, you know, if you do that in your later years, then, you know, mm. you've had a good life, haven't you? Yeah. And I think that's part of the reason you're held in such high regard as you obviously are by Cambridge United fans, that you were a club man who, who and still are, to various things. Yeah, I, yeah I, it, it was, you know, I, you know, and it's difficult to say, but, you know, I, I'm the lucky one, yeah. you know, that everything's worked out for me. And, and as it happened, you know, through being here, going to Cambridge City and being there for nine years and, and start to play again and managing and then going to Histon and, and doing well at Histon, it was all all part of it you know if my career maybe had finished at 32 and then I'd you know I'll go off and you know do do another job that might be different you know I might think differently that I should yeah, have yeah. but because I've had you know such a good time in football after Cambridge United but still being around the local yeah, area yeah. you know yeah. you know I can't you know I can't for one minute you know think that I would wish that you know I'd gone off and you know and I always remember saying at the time, you know, people say, well, they're, you know, if, if they want me, they would come and get me, yeah. you know, because, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, they wouldn't be asking a fortune. Yeah, they'd be knocking doors down, yeah. wouldn't they, yeah. to get they wouldn't, yeah. Yeah, wouldn't, yeah, they wouldn't be asking a fortune for me, so they wouldn't, I wouldn't be overpriced or, mm. well, I might have been overpriced, but I mean, it wouldn't <laughs> be something that, yeah. you know, the club couldn't afford if, if they decided which, that they wanted me. Which managers did you play under? Now, the two that I can remember are Atkinson and John Doherty. Yeah, it was Atkinson... John Doherty, uh, Paddy Soudan, I think for well, Paddy Soudan, I think was before oh, it was a jo yeah. joint with yeah. John Doherty, wasn't he? Um, John Ryan, Ken Shellito, and Chris Turner. Oh. But I was finished when oh, Chris Turner was here. As such, I, I never, I never played. I'd got my injury, and when Chris was here, it was decided that I'd. Who was retire. your favourite manager to play under? Would you say, and why? And I, I guess all those guys brought something different to the club. 
as a manager, but in your opinion, who is your favourite player to uh, manage us? Right, it's play got under? to be Ron Atkinson. Yeah, yeah, I mean John Doherty was really good, and, and I liked John Doherty, but I also understood why some people didn't. You know, mm. but he was underneath what he yeah. portrayed. He was, you know, he was a really mm. nice bloke mm -hmm. and a really, you know, a really good bloke. But you know, he wouldn't he wouldn't stand any rubbish, and you know, he'd be short to to press and to people, and you know, and I think unfortunately that's. That can be your downfall because when things don't start going, you know, people yeah, want to hit yeah, you. And, and yeah. uh, but you know, but you know, under Ron Atkinson, it was just like a, you know, it's just a whirlwind, mm. you know. And he was, yeah. and he'd be in here, and you'd be playing Ed tennis, you'd be playing <laughs> five a side, you know. It's just yeah, so yeah, yeah. relaxed. You know, and all, you know, it was obviously, I was fortunate there was three of us, Spriggy and Alan Barley as well. You know, three young lads that have all come at the same time, and we'd, you know, we'd come in early and do head tennis. We'd We'd go on Fulburn Rec when we stayed over at the White Heart of Fulburn. Yeah, I've heard stories about you guys staying there. And going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll skip those. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tom yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tom Finney said exactly the same. Yeah. You know, and, you know, it was, it was, it was good. And I, I remember from, from Ron was saying when, you know, I, was, I suppose we're going to get into a bit of trouble, um, but not. Not that much because I, I played darts for the supporters club. Yep. And we played on a Thursday um, in the darts, and someone had come in to Ron and said you know, that Steve Allen was out on a Thursday. Obviously, it goes drunk, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, just yeah. playing. You know, how it gets back yeah, to him, yeah. and, you know, he's, he's replied to me, he says, Well, if that's the case, I'm going to send them all out on a Thursday and get drunk. Yeah, you know? exactly, yeah. You know, because that was, he was that, as long as you do it on the Saturday. Yep. It doesn't you know, matter. It doesn't matter, you, do. you know, yeah. and. and you know, and he was probably one of the last of the of the old school managers. Yeah, you know mm. that. You know, that didn't mind this, if the players went out and yeah, had a drink as long this, as it wasn't all on this a Friday night. I yeah. think if you threw a load of you know of these statistics at him, you know, he would. <laughs> you know, yeah. I just want you to go out there and do this and do that. And, and it's the difference between a man manager and a, and a statistics manager, really, isn't it? Because one deals with people, and the other one deals yeah. with. Yeah. <coughs> The yeah, I mean John Doherty was into it quite a, quite a bit as well when he first started, and I, I remember having a few arguments with, with with Doc about it. You know, some bloke from Watford would come in and do all these on the game and say, "Oh, you know, this didn't happen, that didn't happen," or you know, and, and all of that. And I remember, you know, just totally disagreeing with all that all that side of the game that you know it, it doesn't work that way. You know, say, "Oh well." If we didn't head that ball, then they wouldn't have won that ball. Mm. And you know, it can, you, the trouble with with that is you can twist them to how you want, whatever you want to to get from them, you can twist them so that it goes in your favour. Is, is how I how I like that. That's that's an interesting um, thought there for you. So obviously, we know about your managerial career, and we're going to go on to that shortly. But as a manager, how would you feel then? Would you analyse the games, or would you be a people's person and play it just out you go lads enjoy the game I, I think I can honestly say all through my my manager's career I would only want people that I liked mm. who, who I thought big characters are needed aren't they in the yeah pitch. yeah and you know I, you know, I think you know people that keep going around clubs I wouldn't you know I wouldn't want to yeah, go, yeah. go and they'll come in yeah. and they'll they'll do well for a start and then they'll drift out yeah again. you know and I that, always a part and it's been and lots of people you know from each have, have stayed together for a long time was they had such a good dressing room and you know we'd play the game we'd go out together you know we'd Eat after the game stuff, we yeah. would be you know and it, it it's because everybody liked each other and they were friends and Team they were local. Key, isn't it, i yeah. think as well yeah, especially it, at the local level yeah, as well carried us carried us through many a game and through many a season through that you know people wouldn't want to leave and then you don't have to end up paying them fortunes you know because mm -hmm. they want to be there mm -hmm. And seeing things from a manager's point of view, do you think the game is over-analysed these days? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, it's... Um, I mean, I we've got all these data uh, analysts and stuff, haven't we, at games now? Yeah, it's difficult because, you know, you just say, well, you know, things have moved on and, and things are better. But if you're asking me whether it's for the better, I don't know. I think players these days now... They won't play because some, there'll be something on some little bit of a card that says he's only <laughs> yeah. ninety-eight point five percent. Yeah, fit. So yeah. we better rest him, or yeah. you know, or, you know, and, and and when they yeah. talk about you know having to play Saturday midweek, Saturday, I, I can't I can't get why that's a problem. 
you know. Mm. Yeah. So if they don't play, they'll train. And you know, if you train, what's the difference? Yeah. You know, I don't. Yeah. It's still. Steve, there's been something I, I always try and ask people, and that is, as as supporters, we always wonder: does the noise and does the crowd actually impact a game? I mean, you know, if if, if some people have said if they make a mistake and the crowd goes, ah, oh, you know. You, they feel disheartened you themselves. Your, you get somebody on your back, you, you're a wee bit more cautious or something. I think, yeah, I think massively. Yeah. I, I think, you know, if, if, if you can leave, and you, and you can hear sometimes, you know, like one person in a crowd of 6,000, mm. mm. if he shouts at the right time, can actually, you know, would get, you know, it, it's, it, it's difficult because and I don't mean this in, you know, in a, like a, an arrogant or anything way, but I didn't really have, get to the stage where, you know, I felt under pressure from my own support. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I, I, I had to finish quite early, obviously, through, through injury. So when my time of sort of drifting away and not, you know, not really whether I should be in the team or not be in the team, I never really got to that at Cambridge when the crowds were there. So I... I didn't, but you know, I've seen, I've seen it with some players, and you know, and I hold my hands up that you know they can go out and, and perform when, you know, every little thing, and, and people are waiting for you to fail, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you know you see it, and you can come here sometimes, and you know, there's there's some players that they're just not going to get any recognition at a football club from a from a group of supporters, and as always, it's a, it's the negative. I think that are usually the most vocal. Which you makes know. it interesting that occasionally players go to another club and, and they succeed at another club. Yes, where, yeah, where, yeah. Know. Well, you see, you know, people buy somebody and you think, oh, he was, he was terrible there, and they go hmm. there. You know, I think strikers are the, are the key to that. They, they're playing well, if they're not scoring, then they move on, and then they start scoring again, and then they have a little drop, and then they move on. Mm. And that's why I think, you know, lots of forwards don't spend apart from Messi of course but <laughs> you know that don't spend long at a place because you know if you start missing chances when you were scoring that that's that's when crowd because you're in that key area yeah, you know and yeah. if you're not scoring and missing and, people on your back yeah away. you know and I think possibly at the moment came you've got a little bit of that trying to find a goal scorer mm. and and people are coming mm. in and you know there's a mm. there's a general feeling about you know when are we going to get a good centre forward mm. who's, who's going to mm. score regularly and you know, it's hard to come by you know but try not to ask a little long question here but I, I always think that and is it you tell me if it's true that a goal scorer in particular has got to be prepared to miss three and score one yeah you know but so he's got to take chances much more than say uh, a, a Dave Stringer has to do Dave's got to be maybe methodical I think it's got to take chances. I always wonder if that's true. Well, I mean, if they're talking about 20 goal a season yeah. players, so yeah. you know that's what. So that's one in two. Yeah. So you know you, you've, you're going to have, I would think, two, four, five chances in those two games, and to get one. So you've got to, you know, there's going to be a high percentage of, you know, that the problem comes, and I, it's, I don't think it's a missing them. It's not getting them. Yeah. I think if if you're not getting chances then, you know, you're, yeah. that's when I think you're struggling. If you're getting chances, mm -hmm. you know, then it will turn. Mm -hmm. Cause, but you've got to just keep getting in there and be prepared to miss. And yeah. Is there a difference in attitude between defenders and attackers, like, like the strikers? Because you were a sort of crossover player, you, you played at the back, but you scored. That's what you were a scorer as well. Do you, do you, do you find a difference between out -and -out defenders and out -and -out attackers attitude wise? Uh, I think so, yeah. I, I, would, I would say that the, the like defenders seem to be more rounded, if you like, level-headed, more, mm. you know, and, and, mm. and the strikers are a little bit volatile, a little bit, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. hit and miss and, and that, <laughs> but, you know, defenders, you know, you, you, they seem to be the, the calm a bit and, you know, and, and, the, and the big jokers and the messer about, you know, the, the forwards and the, you know, and I think that's how, not all the time, obviously, but, you know, generally that's how. I think that's looking how, back at your career here, who would you say is the best person that you particularly enjoyed playing with? Whew. I think, you know, from, from my career point of view, I think Dave Stringer was, um, did me the most, you know, by him playing with me, sort of covering me, if you like, and, you know, when you, know, when you make mistakes or, you know, they're not, it's not a mistake if somebody's covering you. And I think uh, from that point of view, 
you know, Dave Stringer. Uh, would Chris you say, well, sorry, would you say Dave Stringer was the best partnership you played alongside at the yeah. back, for instance? I would think, yeah, I would think, yeah. you know, we had, we had the best times at, mm. at that time and I think we complemented each other very well, yeah. the most. Um, Chris Turner was the, the funniest bloke I've ever seen in my life, mm. you know, he was, he was just one complete prank after another, you yeah. know, and you were never... As we've heard, yeah. Yeah, you were never safe from, <laughs> from them. Um, Did he ever but, pull any pranks on you? Um, he... He probably will have done. I, yeah. can't, I can't remember too many. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, I, I remember the ones he pulled on everybody else, but <laughs> you know, not too many on myself. I don't. I don't think because obviously, he was a. We were born around the same. So yeah. He was a yaxley, and we've yeah. heard obviously when you was here recently, uh, Ian Darla's Q and A when I saw you here, that obviously Chris used to love pulling a prank on poor Ian, didn't he as well? <laughs> <laughs> he did, yeah. And and the and the young lads, you know, like the the apprentices, he he. He, slaw <laughs> he slaughtered them. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, I mean, you wouldn't get away with it today, but yeah. you know what? You know, but they loved him, you know. Mm. They absolutely loved him. They'd do anything for him, you know, and he'd always have a little joke about, you know, his racing and he'd race anybody and then he'd just get his little finger there and he'll just do it and he'll be off. It'll only be 10 yards and he'd yeah. beat everybody, yeah. you know, and then text of ages to, to work out, you know. A big, a big character in the dressing room oh, like that is yeah. isn't it? In yeah. every team. It's really interesting that you, you've met, we, we, we three have mentioned Dave Stringer on many years on occasion. And he, he turned out to be a fantastic manager yeah. out, out of Norwich, wasn't it? Like, yeah. And, uh, so, so I think it's interesting that you said that he taught you a lot mm. and he then became a terrific manager himself. Do you think that helped you when you moved into your managerial career? Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, you'd, you'd get you get something from everybody whether they're the best manager or you know and you can learn from everybody even if it's learn not to do that you know you you know you have to learn you know and some things work you know there isn't no magic formula for it so you know some people come in and you know even when John Ryan and Ken Shelito came you know they tried things you know they were it didn't work and, and the club was in a like a downward but um you know as, as I've as I've said at Histon when you know they got that close to to there that it was going to end in tears yeah. you know and, and when it was here at Cambridge United they you know the supporters of Cambridge United had some great they had more than lots of clubs that have yeah. been in yeah. football for a long time because they'd go up yeah. come down yeah. go up but I've always said supporting Cambridge United is like being on a roller coaster it ride, is, isn't it? It? Yeah. but you, you know you you would almost say oh, well I'll, I'll take relegations to have promotions yeah, yeah. because you know you get bound to a level and you know whatever level you're at if you're winning the third division the conference you have a great season supporters mm. have a great season mm. whatever level it's at mm. Mm. you know and that's what you want you want your club you want to go there and be successful enjoy success yeah. and then you, you go up and then when so what you don't want and clubs don't want i think is five six ten years consecutive seasons a, are the same yeah yeah, yeah. in a mid table yeah. or you know just before we go on to your speak about your managerial career and what you've done after leaving Cambridge United, as a player you had to retire early due to injury. Talk us through what a player feels from that. Like all you've known is football, all you've wanted to do is be a footballer. You all you do is play football, and then you get told, "Sorry, you can't play that anymore." That love is taken away from you. How 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 did you feel when you learned that? And also, how did you go on to move on after that? Well, I was I was I was quite fortunate. I. I, I think I had five or six years where I only missed uh, games through suspension. I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't. Pick and that up wasn't injuries. many, as we said earlier. Yeah. You haven't been booked or sent off many times. No, <laughs> you know, and, and that was all I'd missed. But then we just we were training on the on the common um, mm. over over at uh, near the swimming pool. Yep. And it was just a, a slide tackle, and I, I tore a bit of ligament in my knee, I think, or something like that. But I came back too soon, mm. you know. I, I, I you know, and I, and I think it was my fault that I sort of said, "Oh yeah, I'm all right." I'll, you know. Do I you think play. that's with a lot of players? They want to just get back playing, yeah. don't they straight away? Yeah. And, and I didn't build it up, and then it yeah. became a problem. And I got um, it was the last minute of a game. I think it was at Brentford. I got studded in my knee, and there was sort of like a, a hole, I think. And it was at the end of the game and everybody had gone off and I was still on the, on the pitch. And I think that was something that was going to mm. cause me mm. problems. And then I, I tried to come back again and then, I, you know, it went. And then we just decided, 
um, talking with Chris Turner, 28, 29, that, you know, I can't do the training. So, you know, I retired and I didn't play for a year. I think I had a year where I'd, I didn't play. Um, but when I did end up going to Cambridge City, doing a little bit, I ended up playing and I played quite a few games for Cambridge City um, while I was managing. So, but it took, took a year or so out and not mm. doing anything yeah, to, to recover sort yeah, of for my need yeah. to be. And then obviously it was a little bit restricted from there. Mm. Um, so obviously after leaving, you moved on to Cambridge City, as we just said. How, how was that going to the rivals at the time, supposedly, in the city? And also, how did you feel then becoming a player manager? Yeah, it was, it was quite a strange one because, obviously, I didn't really know Bill Leavers. I didn't know him at all. Mm. Um, but I did know he was, you know, he, he was upset about his time or his leaving at Cambridge United. And, yep. you know, and I was, so I was surprised that it came um, and, as, as he said, suggested to the chairman at the city that, you know, they approached me to do it. So I was surprised by that because I think there was a, hmm. a bit of uh, a bad feeling. But, you know, I thought, you know, great, let's have a go at this. And, uh, you know, and I really enjoyed it. And, we, you know, we ended up having, certainly at the start, a few good years. We, you know, we, we managed to get a few good local players and sold them on and, you know, things were going quite well, but it was very hard in those days to to be successful because I think I think it was just they didn't have playoffs and yeah, yeah I think you are, you just won the league or that was it that yeah. was it really yeah. that was your only yeah. way way out of it. So you know, again, as we're talking about, you know, clubs want to win things and that you know that made yeah. that quite hard. But I was there for nine years or I think it was nine years. So you know, had a great time. Mm. Um, had a couple of good cup runs and you know things went well and really enjoyed it and you know some of the the players are you know are still friends today and you know we still meet up yeah, at, nice. at Christmas and, and go out and you know so you know from that point of view it was great we had a great social you know on and off the pitch you know when we played we'd, we'd probably stay and have a couple of drinks for the coach back and you know just a great great social. So going back to saying about the social going back to obviously as a player and a manager now when I talk about as a manager, do you think that's crucial as a manager to have your team that is sociable with the fans and sociable together to give that team spirit? Yes, yes, and I, I, you know, I don't for one minute think it's easy because when things going well, everybody wants to know yeah, you. As you a can player, go right? out and you know, and everybody's. But when things are, then it can become a little bit more mm. difficult mm. when you go out because you know, there's always somebody who will yeah. want to mm. have a go and okay. say, you know, you yeah. know, what you're doing here yeah. out, yeah. And, you know, and yeah. you're crap and all that sort of. Mm. When you go yeah. from if you like a step down or two three leagues whatever it was and that you know and people that would you knew from Cambridge United who were, who were playing locally or, or stepped out you know you would use uh, Finn obviously Finn played Spiggy played a few games you know we would get that sort of player in um, and come along and help you know and that's that's what you have to do mm -hmm. you know because you know them you don't have to pay them so much money and mm. that sort of thing so you know they come and do it a favour and you know and again you know if if the social, if you like, or the, the thing is good enough, then they'll stay. And, yeah. you know, and that's, that's what happened with us. Who would you say over your nine-year period at Cambridge City was the best player you signed in? Yeah, what, was hmm. what was your best move? Ooh. Yeah, what was your best move? <laughs> that's a tough one. We had some really good players. Like Kevin Wilkin came, um, who was playing at Milton, and his, hmm. his brother Paul, they came and... and, and well, he played in Shelford, lived in Milton, played for Shelford, mm -hmm. and he came and, you know, he was just fantastic. Paul mm -hmm. Coe um, played and, you know, the, b sold both of those, you know, they went on and, and they had career in football, you know, and that, I think that was the biggest buzz as well, like, you know, if when you manage in non-league, you can sell, mm -hmm. you know, you get a bit of money for the club, but you, you give players a chance to go and play in the league, and, and those two certainly did, and, and you know, again, I had uh, Gary Grogan who was there, who was, a, who was a smashing bloke and, you know, he, he played up front, great player, but a lovely bloke and everybody, you know, loved him and he, you know, he, he was a Cambridge City man and he just uh, helped all the, the ones that come along. So, yeah, I think, again, probably my, my first signings with, um, with Paul, Kevin Wilkin, Paul mm. Coe. Obviously, you, as a manager, you obviously get a buzz. If you've signed a local lad, just played Sunday League football, let's say for instance, like the players we just discussed. 
and then suddenly the league clubs coming in and going, oh, we'll have him. That must be a buzz from you, f- for your point of view as, wow, okay, well, I've done a good job here because I found a local lad and I'm now putting him up the pyramid to play league football. Definitely. You know, there was um, Flacky as well who came from Foxton. He, he came along and uh, he was just like so raw, like a big centre forward that would just mm. go and batter everything. <laughs> and, you know, he was... He was so good, and I remember in training with Andy Beatty. Andy Beatty, remember it? You know, we just throw a ball up, and Andy Beatty would, yeah. you know, look after himself. We'd just throw a ball up in the air for them two just to go and batter each other, and yeah. you know, and uh, and he again, he did well. He he came from Fox, and then all of a sudden, you know, um, Cardiff um, came in for him, and he went on and played league football. And he played for Exeter, yep. you know, and yeah. all those things. You know, I I just take a great deal of pride in yeah. helping yeah, people, that's what's, that's you know, and I would push going, them, yeah. you know, I wouldn't, you know, and I'm honest, maybe rightly or wrongly, like Camus City, I'd, I'd try and sell them, mm. you know, Camus City needed a bit of yeah. money, yeah. you know, and, but, you know, I wasn't bothered about them staying and playing no. at that, you know, I want them to give them the opportunity to play league, league, football, yeah. league football, yeah. I know, I know we're coming towards the end of our yep. time, Ben, but we, we've obviously got to talk about the your glory days with Histon. <laughs> because they were glory, did you came yep. here and you scared us a couple of times. Put Histon on the map, so to speak. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, again, it was just unbelievable. It didn't, you know, it didn't happen overnight. We, we won the league on, on my first year. Then we had, I think we had two or three years in the, in the league above. And then it just seemed to, to take off. And again, the big core of the players were local lads, you know, we had mm. Neil Andrews and Jamie Barker, Ada, Itchy, um, Kendo, just unbelievable people mm. and players, you know, and they're, they're, Good characters they're, yeah, well. they're playing sort of, um, if you like, juice and league football, but all of those stepped up as you went up mm. and were good mm. players, you know, and, and you, you know, they're just smashing people as well, you know, and Again, you know, the social that we had through there and again, you know, would meet up and they all come along to that, you know, but they, you know, made, they made such good friends and they all stayed as friends for, for life and, you know, and, and I've, I've, got to, I've got to say Gareth Baldwin was unbelievable, mm. you know, as, because his work Back is in... to 100% yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, his, his work is in corporate and he got people in and he got people investing in the club, he got people, you know, back in the club, mm. you know, and, and it still riles me to this day about, you know, how people would knock when it started to go wrong because there is no, there's only one way that it's ever going to go, yeah, yeah. you know, at some point, you know, and he, he got people to invest and people would say, oh, they left the club a million pound in debt, you know, over, the, but it cost a million pound to yeah, get the to ground get up to it, yeah, yeah. you know, so it's not You've as... You've basically gone from village football, haven't you, to yeah. almost the football league side, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, in that short space of time as well, like you say, eventually something's, the bubble's going to burst somewhere. Yeah. If I can ask you two little things, Steve, please. First, one that you might not want to answer, there's always been a belief that John Beck was in the background as a mentor. Was that the case? It was... I would say what would, would happen um, with John, he's, he's got magnificent experience. He's been there, he's done it, he's a great coach. Yeah. Um, then there's the other side of there we're completely different people yes. mm. but you know it worked yeah the partnership worked you it? know it, yeah. it doesn't matter you know people think you know oh, John Beck did all this or then people say well I did that and John would you know that it worked, worked. As a it yeah mm. you know within that at the end of the day you know John's expertise you would use you, you know and it'd be silly not to yeah Absolutely. you know within that you know we know what comes with with some of it but you know, I can honestly say that I would pick the team. Mm. You know, and at the end of the day, mm. you know, that was it. You know, and he how how did John that. become involved with you at Histon? Was that was through that Gareth. through here or through, through Gareth. Gareth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gareth um, knew John, and um, I was going away. I think on holiday. I think um, because obviously being um, I was working at the school then, so yeah. I have to take yeah. the same yeah. thing. So it'd be in Hall, um, in August that I had to go. So he asked John to come in and come in and, come in and yeah. took the team for a couple of games and then, you know, ended Enjoyed up staying it, and, yeah. you know, um, he was a massive part of Histon's success. Mm. There's, no, mm. there's no doubt about that. Thanks very much for answering that because you could have dodged that question. <laughs> 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 no. Can I, can, I ask, can I ask a couple of yep. questions? Please? First one would be, 
Um, you did the, the the very famous game was obviously your biggest game, which was probably against Leeds United, wasn't it? Yes. In the cup for Liston. That was that was national news that day. So tell us about that. It must have been it must have been it must have been worrying and frightening <laughs> and exciting and. It was. I mean, it was just fantastic. You know that the buzz around the village and you know when you work in the village and you work at the school and you know we managed to get the, the television would come to the school and it goes around the village so the whole village was 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 buzzing from the Saturday and we obviously we were playing on the Sunday and I I went down the local pub on the on the on the Saturday night you know because it was sort of that and there was probably someone on telly I didn't want to watch as well uh, <laughs> and there was quite a few lead supporters in there you know from from local and sort of mm. you know so having a good chat with them and they were taking a selfie and sending it back look we're here with the, the manager and Gaffer, yeah. you know yeah. then you, when you're walking out on the day and everywhere's full up you know the old village is full up all the pubs are full up and and I, I, I can honestly say I didn't realize how wet it was yeah. until I, I watched it on the video. Yeah. You know, during it, you know, people say, you're you know, seeing like splats of mud on the camera yeah. after watching it. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I just didn't realise that, you know, it, it, it was that heavy rain and, and possibly yeah. only played because the cameras were there. Yeah. No, I'm just going to bring you back to the Abbey again if, if I could, because we've been going quite a long time. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, and that's great. You played several games here. You played, Piston played several times up here and at the time. You didn't have to give us a fright. <laughs> you know, I think we won one and lost yeah. one. It was, we didn't sell it. Cambridge were on a low and Histon yeah. was flying at that time. How did it feel coming back and how did it uh, feel? Was it, was it another, was it a professional thing? Did you just lock your mind and say, this is another game I'm going to Yeah, I, th I think, you know, a little bit of you wants to sort of showcase yourself, if you like. Mm. Mm. You know, I, I wouldn't come here and think, you know, I hope you get beat or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. Being the manager of that, and I don't think anybody would expect any different than, no. you know, I no, want my no. team to win. Yeah. You know, I'd, I wouldn't go running and, and shouting no, about exactly. it. You know, I mean, we'd already had the one where I think, you know, we'd beat Cambridge five in the FA Trophy, yeah, yeah. which I think was a, yep. you know, shock to everybody. Yeah. Just a bit. I'm yeah. still <laughs> sore on that one. <laughs> you know, so we knew that we were there, that we were, yeah. we were close to that. And we, you know, we had a good team, you know, whether people, and, it, and it's difficult for people to think, oh, you know, look where, you know, from Cambridge night, look where we are. We're playing Histon and they're just a village team, but at that point we weren't. Mm. Yeah. You know, we were a, a good conference team. So, yeah, I, but, I agree to be honest. But you can't yeah. take away that no. Histon's just a little village down mm. the road, mm. can you? And, no. And, um, but no, it, it was it was quite surreal. Yeah, I'm Quite surreal. I think the first one was I think was was it the Boxing Day when it was a full yeah. house? Yeah. There was ten thousand, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a full house. Mm. In fact, I think you must have emptied this time. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and just quickly before we finish, what are you up to these days? Um, well, I, I, I do my after school football um, coaching. I work, I think I'm about 17, 18 hours at, at uh, Histon Junior School doing the PE, so I do every class. So I'm sort of almost full time over, over there, and I go. I watch Histon sometimes when they're at home, um, and well, I, I came down here not as much as I should do, but I, hopefully I'm going to. I have a question for you before we finish that I want to know an answer for. Okay. So Coconuts are looking for some ex-players to be patrons to come on Coconuts and help us on a match day on certain games, and that's something we'd like to offer you as a club legend. I would definitely be interested. Okay. Um, to be. To yeah. be discussed, is that yeah, on camera? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I was going right. to say to be discussed, but yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah, that, that's, that's we, we'd fine. We'd love to have you here with us. Yeah, yeah. okay, that's fine. As, as a guest. As a guest, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Okay, yeah, cheers, Steve. Cheers.